Hi, welcome to the Sankofa Pan African series. First, have you downloaded your free copy of our children's illustrated biography of African legends yet? Please do so if you haven't. Don't forget that we owe our children a responsibility to expose them to our history. Also, please help us to continue bringing you videos like this one by supporting us through Patreon or by buying me coffee. Please subscribe, share and like our videos. Our legend today is Bantu Stephen Biko, nationalist, socialist, anti-apartheid campaigner, and a founder of the Black Consciousness Movement. Bantu Stephen Biko was born on December 18, 1946. Biko's given name Bantu means people. He was the third child of his parents. Mzigai Matthew Biko and Alice Mansiti Biko. His father was a policeman but left the police force to work as a clerk while studying for law, a law degree by correspondence from the University of South Africa. Biko's mother Alice was employed first in domestic work for local white um, households then as a cook at Grey Hospital in King Williamstown. Biko's father died in 1950 when Biko was four years old, leaving the family solely dependent on his mom's income. According to Biko's sister, it was his observation of their mother's difficult working conditions that resulted in Biko's earliest politicization. Biko first attended St. Andrew's Primary School and later Charles Morgan Higher Primary School, both in Ginsburg. He was a particularly intelligent pupil and was allowed to skip a year. In 1963, he transferred to the Forbes Grand Secondary School in the township where he excelled at math and English and topped his class. In 1964, the Ginsberg community offered him a bursary which allowed him to join his brother Kaya as a student at Lovedale, a prestigious boarding school in Alice, Eastern Cape. Um, within three months of Steve's arrival, his brother Kaya was accused of having connections to Poco, the armed wing of the Pan-African Congress, PAC, which the government had banned. Both Kaya and Steve were arrested and interrogated by the police. His brother, Kaya, was convicted, then acquitted on appeal. And although no evidence of Steve's connection to Poco was found, he was still expelled from the school. After his expulsion, Biko enrolled in and graduated from St. Francis College, a liberal boarding school in Natal, and then proceeded to the University of Natal Medical School. While there, he became involved in the Multiracial National Union of South African Students, NUSAS, but soon became disenchanted with NUSAS because he thought that instead of simply allowing blacks to participate in white South African society, the society itself needed to be restructured around the culture of the black majority. In 1968, he co-founded the All Black South African Students Organization, Sasu and became its first president the following year. Sasu was based on the philosophy of black consciousness, which encouraged blacks to recognize their inherent dignity and self-worth. 
In the 1970s, the black consciousness movement spread from university campuses into urban black communities throughout South Africa. In 1972, Biko was one of the founders of the Black People's Convention, an umbrella organization of black consciousness groups. In 1973, Biko and other Sasso members were banned. Their associations, movements, and public statements were completely restricted. He then resorted to operating secretly, establishing the Zimele Trust Fund in 1975 uh, to help political prisoners and their families. He was arrested four times over the next two years and was held without trial for months at a time. On August 18, 1977, Biko and a fellow activist were seized at a roadblock and jailed in Port Elizabeth. Biko was found naked and shackled outside a hospital in Pretoria, 740 miles away on September 11th, and he died the next day of a massive brain hemorrhage. Police, the police and the, the apartheid government, of course, denied um, that he had been maltreated, uh, even after it was determined later that he had been severely beaten while in, uh, beaten while in custody. The officers involved were cleared of wrongdoing. But in 1997, after the end of apartheid, five former police officers confessed to killing Biko and applied for amnesty to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, um, a body that was convened to review atrocities commit that were committed during the apartheid years. The application for amnesty was denied in 1999. Thanks for watching. Please download your free copy of our children's books and support us through Patreon or by buying me coffee. Also, tell your friends about this channel. Thank you.